Thank you. So welcome everyone. This is the October meeting of the Nottingham Zone of Adjustment. And on the agenda tonight, we have a public hearing and some other things to discuss as a, as a board. I think we'll do the public hearing first. Yes, there are no objections, but I, first I'd like everyone to introduce themselves, the members of the board, since I don't see you all in one line and the, peop the people who are here from the public or who are the applicants might like to know who's on the board. So Terry, I see you first, can you go first? Yeah, I'm uh, Terry Bonzer. Peter? Peter White, White Grove Road. No, I can't see anyone. Raylene? Raylene, could you introduce yourself? She's Raylene, muted. you're muted. All right, <laughs> I'm unmuted. Raylene Shippey Rice. Thank you. And Teresa. Teresa is the vice chairman of the board. She's muted too. <laughs> Can you unmute yourself, Teresa? Hi, I'm Teresa Bascom. Thank you. Okay, so we have a full board tonight, which is good. And I hear in the background somebody's radio or TV. Maybe you could turn that down and off. I don't know where it's coming from. That, that noise right there. Thank you. So we will open tonight's meeting by commencing with our public hearing. We have one hearing tonight and it is an application from Michael Kemp. It is case number 20-012-SE requesting a special exception to permit a garage 10 feet from a side property line where 20 feet is required per article 2C3B of the Nottingham Zoning Ordinance. The property is located at 9 South Road in Nottingham, New Hampshire, and is identified as tax map 72, lot 35. So the, the general procedure of our meeting, who's, who's representing the applicant? Is Mr. Kemp doing it himself? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, Mr. Kemp, generally we um, open the hearing by allowing you to present your case to the board. And this would include showing us any maps you may have, um, explaining to us what you're trying to do, why you need the special exception, like why you, why you have a hard time putting it anywhere else that would meet the zoning ordinance. And also going over the five criteria, which you have to, um, which you have to show that you, you um, meet in order to be granted a special exception. So you will go first and then I will call for any members of the public who are in favor of the application to speak and any members of the public who are against the application to speak. And then you can follow up at the very end with um, a rebuttal or explaining anything that might come up from these other people, if that works for you. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Mr. Kemp, if you would go forward. Do we have any abutters present before we go forward? No one, just members of the public? I see other people who are not. No, there's one abutter. There's one abutter, Mike Heyer. Mike Heyer, okay, thank you, Mike. All right, so Mr. Kemp, are you prepared to present your case to the board? Yes, I am. Okay, go forward. I lost the um, the uh, the application they were showing. Can you put the application up, Joanna? Yes, I just I just um, okay. the uh, plan. Is that what you would like to have shown right now, Mr. Kemp? I I, I think I was going to um, read the um, the criteria first. Yeah. Okay. Just a moment and I will get right to that. There it is. Okay, go ahead. All right. So so I looked at um the RSA 674-17 and I see that I don't think that this is going to infringe on any of the um items that were listed in that article from A to I. I reviewed them all and I didn't write them all down and stuff like that, but it looked like 
it would have nothing to do with schools and zoning and stuff like that and some of the farmland. That's what I understood from it. Should I go at number two? Yes. Okay. Uh, the criteria, whether to train a configuration of the law to make it more appropriate than not for such a special exemption to be granted. The location of my leach field and the septic tank would make it impossible to have the dump truck that I have come in now at the end of every year and deliver my cordwood to the bulkhead at the corner of my house. And if I have the garage too close, it would it would be probably real hard to go there. I'd probably have to wheelbarrow it all in. And that's my, that's my reason to, for the ac access to get there. On the criteria three, uh, I see that this grant as such would uh, impact the neighborhood. I don't think it'll have any impact on the neighborhood at all. Uh, I'm going to keep the same driveway. It's going to go right to the garage. I'm not putting a different one in or anything. And um, that's most of my reasons for applying for this. And can you now also go to your map if you're completed, if you've completed this? Sure. Just point out to us um, the various things you were talking about, where your house is, where you're, where you dump your cord wood, where your driveway is, that kind of thing. Right. I believe two of the uh, two of the people came to uh, to see, and I brought them on the property and showed them exactly where it was going to be a little bit tight. And I don't know, can anyone see the mouse? Yes. Someone has the mouse arrow there. So yeah. there's uh, there's 38 feet there, and there's a deck also coming off the house that's probably about I don't know 10 feet or so. I didn't put a dimension on that, but it's about 10 feet or so. So with the garage being over where it is and that little line coming in on the right hand side, up top to the left, yep, that, that would be where the dump truck would drive around and over to the back corner of the house through the yard. And I do have boards set up, yep, right over there is where I dump all my wood right out back there. And if the garage was over more and I had to go around the garage the other way, I'd have to go over the septic and the leach field, which it wouldn't be good to be driving a dump truck over that. So the reason that I'm looking for the 10 feet variance is that it would give me enough room to have the truck come in and make a turn to go in. It would be still kind of tight, but it would work for me anyways. And that's my reason. It's for access to drop off my cordwood out back when it's, when it's delivered or anything that I bring down cellar, my furnace, hot water tank or anything like that. And, and that's what I have. I can't go around the front of the house. There's power lines, it's all rocks and boulders out there. I didn't, yeah, where the electric wires go through. My artesian wells on the other side of my house, so I can't put it there. It end up being right on the, uh, either on the pipe work going to it or on the well itself. I have a drilled well there, it's not an artesian one. And, and that's pretty much what we're looking at. So members of the board may ask you questions if you don't mind, if Joanna, are you controlling this map, Joanna? I am, do y'all wanna see the pictures too before he, you go to questions? Okay, let's have the, let's have the pictures. Okay. So I can't get them turned and I apologize for that, but here you go, you can. Um... Yep. <clears throat> so you're looking at the uh, path that I have there. You can see the arrow drawn up on the top right hand corner. And this is where the dump truck would come in. And this would be probably about where the top wire goes across there, the, the, the line I drew. That's probably within five to seven feet of where the garage would be so that I could drive through and you can see where the flowers and the umbrella, there's a, there's a deck on the side of the house right there that protrudes out. <laughs> now we gotta go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> there's my bulkhead right there where your arrow is now. 
Yeah, that's my bulkhead at the corner of the house. If you come back a little bit, you'll see the boards on the ground. That, that's where my uh, pipe comes from, my septic system now. But I put all them boards there so I could drive a truck over it. Uh, without crushing the pipe, sir. Correct. <laughs> yep. And this right here shows in my backyard, if, if the garage was over and I had to drive around it, I would have to drive over the septic and the leach field to get to the corner of the house, which I, I, I couldn't do, you know. Wouldn't be good for the leach field. No, it wouldn't be. The septic tank had lived through it, but the leach field wouldn't be good. And that's another picture of where they were, the, the leach field and the septic. Pictures are a little bit less here, but they're pretty good. And there's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the picture of the boards I drive over. It's to protect the septic, to septic pipe. And there's the bulkhead. You can see I got some pallets around the corner of the house now. There's some wood stacked over there right now. Mm -hmm. so I usually have about five or six cords delivered every year. Wow. You stack it outside? I bring it down cellar. I stack it down cellar. I spray it for bugs, and then I bring it down cellar. So I don't have to go out all year. Like I do. Yeah, I know. I used to. I didn't have a cellar. <laughs> now I got a cellar, hoping for a garage. Okay, so that's all of your material. Okay, yep, uh, that, was, uh, that was pretty good. It's a little, little tough. The pitches are a little rough, but it's okay. Yeah. It's a good idea. Uh, any questions from anyone? Um, I know two of the people came by. Um, I don't see their names up there. I couldn't remember them. Yeah, Terry Terry came by. So would you describe again, <clears throat> and I know you don't have the point your Joanna does. Joanna, could you put your where the rocks and boulders are and move the thing down a little bit so we can see? No, the other way. <laughs> Sorry. Right there. That's what I was wondering. So you seem to have quite a bit of land over here. Is this where all the boulders are? Yes. On this kind of, I can't read this street because it's upside down. Oh, power lines by the power lines. Yeah, those are the power lines going through. They're probably, I didn't really measure the power lines, but they're probably 20 feet from the house. Okay, right here at the closest point. Yeah, they're not too, too far away from my house right now. Like I could not build you know, nothing underneath them, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, there's no place over here where your garage would fit is my question. No. Okay. The, 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 the wires come to my house from there. The, the power lines go from there. It, it may look a little bit drawn, but it's maybe a little bit less of an angle coming back down, going across this way. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, the, the power lines are pretty tight with the house. Um, is it good, going to be a two-story garage? One story. One story. Is it, there's a shed there now, which I'm going to get rid of, and it's about exactly the same height as the house. I mean, the um, the shed, the garage will be the same height as the shed. It's a single no. uh, double stall uh, average height. I'm not sure what that is, but it's not wicked high. And the garage is going to be 24 feet by 36 feet. Correct. Why so big? <laughs> well, right, right now I have a golf cart. I have a motorcycle. I have a generator. I have two trucks, two vehicles that I'd like to keep in there as the years go by. And I figured the extra room in the back of the garage would be enough to put the golf cart. I'm going to put like an access door off to the side of it so I don't have to drive anything out and around and I'll just either take the motorcycle out from the back, or, but I have quite a, quite a few items to go in there. When I lose the shed, the shed's pretty much full. It was one of my neighbor's front porches that I inherited. Was oh, the shed right on the same site as you showed the garage, Mr. It Penn? is, it is. I didn't draw it in there, but it's right where the garage is now. I guess speaking to Peter's concern, <clears throat> I just want to point out that the, th the 36 feet, the larger dimension, Peter, it's not what needs the setback. It's the it's the twenty four feet, which is about standard size for a two car garage. Twenty four feet. You can get four cars in there. <laughs> no. no, you can only fit two. 
Two yeah, and Diane's 24 a, feet. Yeah, right. Diane's got a 24 foot. And when she's got her car in the middle, if you put one more in there, you wouldn't get a third, <laughs> even if they were small. I think, right, Diane? Correct. Yeah, because I've been in her garage. I'm going to almost build the exact same garage as hers, except it'll be a few more feet longer, six feet longer. For the snowblower. The motor yeah, snowblower. Yeah, <laughs> the snowblower, the lawnmower. <laughs> yep. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone else have questions? And I kind of like Terry to speak to this because I know he went there and he's a site kind of person. Yep. Would you mind, Terry, just speaking? Yeah, to no, I, I went over there and uh, Mr. Kemp showed me around. Yeah, because he's got a shed. Uh, you know, he shows where the garage is in the back near the leach field. And then in the front, the other shed is almost like right at the very front where the two garage doors would be. Um, he wants to go 10 feet off the line. You know, he went, I don't think if, if he pushed 20 feet off the line and he had to do something with his septic, he probably, you know, that extra 10 feet in, I think would mess it up more than pushing the garage back the 10 feet closer to the line. If he had to, you know, he could get rid of that shed and put a septic in there. So I don't think the garage is going to affect that any. And uh, yeah, on the other side, it is pretty, it's a tougher spot to put it. And plus, he, not really very accessible for to drive around with a car so right anyone else there's not a plot plan is there showing the other adjacent lots no i have i have one i can probably hold it up wow. in front of the thing why don't you try that is it a tax map it's a, it's a scroll paper that Roland gave to me when I bought the place uh, probably 34, 33 years ago. Let's see if we can see it. Okay. I don't see a thing. It looks like a white paper. Oh, there, that's a oh, little. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit more here. All right, let me see. Um, Did that answer your question, Peter? All right. So these are like, yeah, these these are these, these are my two lots right here. They 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 were two lots originally, but I bought this other one off them quite a few years ago. And then this is the road coming up, and this is the road going by the house. So you actually have more than one lot. You want one now? They combined it. You combined my, my, it, it is it is one lot, but it's a combined lot now. So you, you have like 0.6 acres. Correct. I purchased that because it was under the power lines and it was, um, it allowed me to move my house. I moved the house in the uh, years past. There seem to be no more questions from the board. Very quiet. You also have the map. Yeah, I can see that. Is everyone good with the map now? Yes, I'm good. Yes, yeah, I'm good. So this may be different from the order that I said in the beginning, but generally um, I'm going to go to the public, anybody else who's at the meeting who wishes to, wishes to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor? Thank I'm you. in favor. Um, it, it's really not gonna impede his neighbor's and are property. You in, 
Are you a neighbor? Even though I'm not a but I'm not an abutter. Okay. But you you live in the neighborhood. I do live in the neighborhood. It's not gonna impact anybody. Impact no. anybody, correct. In your opinion. I am an abutter. Um I'm not sure if you're seeing me now. I can see you now. Uh, please please speak. Uh, okay, uh, it's Mike Heyer. I uh, I am the butter. Uh, the back side of our property um, comes down right where his driveway is, and I don't see any issues with uh, what he's proposing. Okay, so you have no objection. No objections. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for? Like I consider these two people to be speaking for. If there are no further people to speak for, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? Madam Chair. Yes. Just so you are aware, we did get um, one of butter that sent an email as well. And for the record, um, Audra and Eric Dizletz also uh, have sent that email and they said they have no problem with the Kemp's building a garage with a 10 foot setback. They are at 19 South Road. So they're, they abut his land. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. You're welcome. That's the only correspondence regarding this hearing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm. I guess it sounds to me if the board has no questions, I'm, I'm throwing it back now to the members of the board. Do any of you have questions, concerns, or anything you wish to add to this hearing? Well, my only concern is it seems as, you know, the 10 foot setback isn't the issue, it's the size of the building he wants to put there. That seems to be the, the hardship. I mean, a 25, 24 by 36 building is a huge building. It's almost as big as the house. So once again, if that's, you know, I mean, he wants to put a building that size on his property and he needs, you know. That's not against the zoning ordinance, um, Peter. So that's not a question before the board. Well, that's why he needs a 10 foot setback is because the building is so big. If it was only 14 by 24 or, or 14 by 20, whatever, he wouldn't need a, a setback. He wouldn't need a 10 foot special exception. But that's a pretty standard size for a two car garage. Exactly. The, the 24 wide is standard. Yeah. Yes, I extended. know that my last garage and the only garage I've ever had, Peter, was 22 feet wide and it was tight to get two cars in there. Really? Were, 22 feet? Excuse me? I mean, a car is only like four feet wide, five feet. Oh, Peter, a car is more than five, six feet wide. Foot on either side be 10. But... You got one of those smart cars, Peter? Or those yeah. Little... <laughs> yeah. A little kitty car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, is there any anyone else have any issues, questions, concerns? I, I just want to caution you that you know he, he's looking for a setback. He's not. There are other people in town who deal with the size of his building. That really is not our concern, in my opinion. So, if there's no further discussion, I, the chair will entertain a motion regarding this application. Madam Chair, I move that we accept the application in case 20-012-SE from Michael Kemp, requesting a special exception to permit a garage 10 feet from a side property line where 20 feet is required. I'll okay. second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded. Did you get that Joanna Terry seconded it? To approve <clears throat> this application as presented. And I'm going to have a roll call vote since we're, we're at a Zoom meeting. Um, I'm going to vote first. I'm the chair. I vote yes. Terry, could you be next, please? Yes, I, I vote yes. Peter, please. I vote yes. Raylene? Raylene Shippy Rice? She's muted. <laughs> Raylene? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. And how do you vote? Did you hear the motion? Yes. I support the request. Okay. And so Teresa? Yes. Okay, that's, you have a unanimous decision. Mr. Kemp, um, I am required to uh, warn you that anyone can appeal our decision, anyone in the public. 
and they have 30 days to do so. So if you start your project before 30 days and somebody challenges the decision and prevails, you might be out a little money, but it doesn't happen very often, but it, the possibility exists. So that's all I'm telling you. No, no, that, that's good to hear. Okay. So I think that we're, we're done and you have your permission. Okay. You'll be receiving a written notification from Joanna, a, a notice of decision, and it will also be posted on the town website. Correct, Joanna? Correct. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Welcome. Right. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. All right. Take care, Mr. Kent. Thanks a lot. So, so uh, oops. Could I see the agenda again, please, Joanna, since Yes, and Mr. Kemp, unless you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, you don't have to, you can sign off. Yeah, you can stay or not. It's a public meeting. Anyone's, is, um, anyone is allowed to stay. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm all set. I'm going to uh, probably leave the meeting then. <laughs> okay, and, uh, okay. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Bye. Okay. Can everybody see the agenda? I can see it. So the okay. next item on the on the agenda is conditional approvals. Are are we? Is this the letter from Dale? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. So, okay. can you put that letter up? I, I think we sent it to everyone yesterday, today, the day before. This is regarding um, a case that we had. I think last month was it last month? The gentleman who wanted to build a garage for his oil trucks off Route Four there. And we had some conditions on the approval, which the, I would say that the building inspector code enforcer took, um, he, he didn't particularly like what we did because it's impossible for the town to enforce. Can you all see it? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Here, here is his letter to me, I can see. Only part of it. I received the notice of decision for case 20010-VA Deke Fuels. I have a few thoughts, concerns. <clears throat> I can't see the part after a waiver. What is it a waiver was? I can't see. Can you move it to the left a little bit? So that I'm, I've got everybody's picture on the, or maybe tell me how to get rid of these pictures of everybody. You, you move everybody down to the screen, bottom of the screen. Got, thank you, Joanna. <clears throat> okay. Oh, that worked. Cool. I have a few thoughts, concerns. A waiver was granted with a condition that no more than 2,500 gallons of fuel be stored between two trucks. My concern is, how do we enforce this? If they violate it, it would not be practical to revoke a variance, possibly years after the building is constructed. And honestly, I don't really know how you go about revoking a variance. I've never heard of it happening. Um, unless some other party took them to court, which maybe the town could do, but anyway. In addition, it, it, in addition, things may change in the future, allowing more. I don't know what he's talking about, but more. To me, this seems, it, this seems that it still could be accomplished, but through the site plan, which deals with the business, not the structure. Also, a site plan is something we can enforce and require changes as needed. The, den the denial was for setbacks, not fuel. I just don't think we can realistically enforce this. So that's the building inspector's reaction to our decision at that meeting, which if you remember, we had quite a bit of discussion about um, doing such a thing and about what exactly is our purview and what exactly are we being asked to do. And sometimes there are very practical reasons why we shouldn't stray off course with what we're being asked for. So I guess maybe we should have a better idea of the planning process what the purview of the planning board is, which Teresa is usually pretty good at bringing us up to speed on because she served on the planning board for a couple of years. And if you remember correctly, I did tell you guys that we didn't need to be dealing with that, that it was the planning board, but I was shot down. Right, Teresa did say it was a you know site planning. So I voted no because I didn't like the condition at all. So. The only reason I voted yes was because the person who had the application, the applicant, actually said he was okay with it. Because I asked, I said, are you okay with this? 
And he said, yes. And I said, okay, then I'll agree with it. But I wasn't going to vote yes either because I, I thought it was a crazy idea. I felt we should leave it up to the planning board. So I just wanted to throw this up for discussion tonight and just as kind of an educational. Wasn't this a, a um, I thought we all thought, didn't we send the recommendation to the planning board? No, we didn't. We don't send things to the planning board. We don't recommend to the planning board. Well, no, but we, but the planning board had our information, had our response. Well, if we hadn't given the guy a, a, a variance or a waiver, um, With restrictions. He, he, he wouldn't have been able to do it at all. Right. What we, what, what we did was add conditions that really are out of our purview. I, that's what Mr. Sylvia is concerned about. Like how is he supposed to enforce this? Number one. Number two, you know, if he violates it, who's going to know? And if we did know, what do you, what can he do about it? There's really no, there's really no. Um, He's what? recommending that we do us that we would we review the site plan. No, we are not. We don't review the site plan. That's the planning board. That's the planning board's purview. They 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 do site reviews. They do site walks. If you are doing any kind of a business, they go out there, they look at your plans, they go in person and they, I know I've ha had two site plan reviews on my property in Lee. And it is their, it's part of their job to make sure the site is safe and all of that stuff. Uh, that's one of, one of my questions. Should it, this have gone before the planning board before the ZBA? I don't It went before no. the planning board as a, as a um, conceptual but they cannot go to the planning board for their variance. I mean, um, for their site plan review without the variance approval. So has the planning board seen this since we reviewed it? So no, it, can't it hasn't gone back to the planning board yet. They aren't ready to, to, to move forward for that yet. Yeah, because I am in some agreement that it's really the planning board that should have set conditions but my other concern is that, you know, this is kind of an environmentally sensitive area. And I just, you know, I mean, I, I went for that motion because I thought it was a compromise to partially protect the environment. But I felt guilty about voting for that afterwards. I mean, we're putting two big oil trucks full of oil in the middle of a wetlands near, near a open water. I mean, how silly is that? We, we should have just voted no, I think, to protect the environment. I mean, one accident there will be a mess as we discussed. <laughs> Who can guarantee there won't be an accident? Nobody. So yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about that project. And I, I would hope the planning board would raise these same concerns, but to be honest, I haven't really seen any of our regulatory bodies, you know, drawing any lines on anybody. So that's part of the reason why I, I felt we had a chance to do something. So if this went, so what, so from us, it goes to the planning board? Yes. Or and the like planning review. board hasn't made a decision about even to review. And they haven't submitted an application for a site plan application yet. So once the applicant does submit that, then the um, planning board will be reviewing that case. So anyone who had concerns about the project could appear, could appear to the planning board and express their concerns about the wetlands. Yes. But that would be done as a private citizen, not as a member of the board. If you're referring to any of the members of this board, that is correct. Yes. Or, or not even a budget. Or the Conservation Commission. Correct. Or anybody else in town. And there is a conservation commission member on the planning board, correct? Several, several in fact. Yes. So I would think they'd be alarmed about this proposal, the conservation commission. But again, it's not in front of the planning board yet. I guess part of Mr. Sylvia's point, though, is that we put conditions on the variance 
that were really the purview of the planning board and that are not enforceable because they're just not enforceable. Whereas in the planning board process, they would be in the planning. Well, I think if there was an accident and he, he exceeded the 2,500 gallons, he would be crim criminally negligent. It wouldn't just be an accident because he would be violating the law, violating the condition. So if there's an accident, yeah. So hopefully he'll keep that in mind and he'll follow the follow the condition. Because if he doesn't, he's breaking the law. He's criminally negligent. Well, the law and what we do are not the same. Oh yes, when we pass an ordinance, that's the law. When we pass a condition, that is the law. He has to follow it until a court changes it. So he's saying he can't um, monitor this because we're we're limiting it to 2,500 gallons. And how is that going to be monitored? He can we can only do anything after the fact, not before the fact. I think what he's saying is we should stick to our we should stick to the questions before us and recognize, appreciate and know that the planning board has a part, a big part in this kind of a case and that we were really on, in their territory and out of our own. And because of that, there is no way the town can enforce the conditions. But isn't there one of the, one of the um, questions, one of the five questions is the impact? Public interest. That's yes. the number one question. Right. And this is a public interest issue. Oh, it sure is. So I don't see how we are stepping outside our boundaries by addressing something that's in one of the five criteria. Which criteria is it in? The one about public interest. I don't have them in front you know, of me. Almost any, almost any business I can think of could make mistakes issues or do sloppy work that would be against the public interest. So that's kind of a... Well, they're liable if they do. <laughs> just because he's got oil trucks is not against the public interest. You probably, some of you burn oil in your house. You know, where does the oil come from? Mm. Nobody has to bring it to you. It's destroying our world Gentlemen. And, our, and our wetlands. So we got to protect our wetlands. It's up to the people of the town. The federal government's not going to do it. The state government's not going to do it. It's up to us. If you wait till you cut down every tree in the forest to put up windmills and solar panels, you'll find out you're uh, going to have a more impact than this. Well, too bad they got to protect our trees too. How are you going to do that and put up windmills and solar panels? Well, you put them in areas that are open and clear, like offshore. You should put up offshore wind turbines and get um, 30 question. times the power. <laughs> hey, we're digressing. Let's stick to that. Dale's them. question was that we said 2,500 gallons of fuel, and how can he enforce that there's not going to be more than 2,500 gallons of fuel between the two trucks? That's he essentially also, the issue. Also, he also said this issue problem could be accomplished but through the site plan which yeah. deals with the business before them you know if, if you don't mind I, I wouldn't mind tabling this discussion until we see how the planning board handles this 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 proposal how the planning board handles it is really irrelevant oh no it's very important to our town i'm not talking i'm not saying it's not important to our town it, it is irrelevant to our, this board's purview well, I don't know how we can resolve anything until the planning board acts. Well, there's, I don't think there's anything we can do with doing anything new on the ordinance. I mean, on the uh, variance, because we've already mm. done it. But I mean, I think he's telling us in the future, don't do this. Leave it up to the planning board. Yeah. Exactly. We're supposed to address the request, period. Any digression as to how big of a garage are you putting up? Why do you need that big of a garage? Or how full your truck's gonna be or any of that is out of our- I disagree with that. 
Well, now, once again, you. he's building a mega garage, and that's why it's so close to the to the property line. If his abutters were against that, I would have voted no. But because people didn't mind, I went along with it. But yeah, I mean, it's very much all these things affect the public interest, and it's our job. Number one, our job is to protect the public interest. Number one. That's the first yep. criteria. And it's something we've turned our backs on too many times, in my opinion. We said, the heck with the public interest. Let's just let them do it. And it's no, made we're a not mess, saying, it's we're made not a mess of that, this town. <laughs> we're not saying the heck with the public interest, Peter. We're letting exactly. people build on their properties like so, they have a right to do. So you're not worried if oil trucks are parked next to North River? That doesn't the, concern you? The they trucks. drive along the road every single day, Peter. If they had an accident next to the river, that would be a problem. Yeah, <laughs> five thousand so, gallons. We're talking. So what I don't understand, you're, you're, you, you can't make this enti entire country safe and put everybody in plastic and bubble wrap. Our responsibility got, is Nottingham. I'm not talking about the. I'm talking about the town of Nottingham, and right. our job is to do what's in the public interest, and we keep forgetting that. Nobody's like, oh, forgetting what? it. We don't want a, any lawsuits. We better do give the property owners whatever they want. And that's why this, uh, we have this huge messes all over, around Pentuckway Lake there. It's so really damaging property values right now. Some of the things that have been approved, making a mess. He says that the denial was for setbacks, not fuel. But when you're talking about setbacks, there's the reason for the setbacks is to protect a neighbor's property. <clears throat> I mean, why do you have setbacks? It's to protect the, the neighbor's property. It's to protect the water line. It's to protect something. That's why you have setbacks, right? I mean, that's well, the he, purpose of setbacks. And give people privacy. I think his setback was 100 feet. He met all the other setbacks on each side, the wetlands and everything. The only setback was in the very back of the lot that was where the wetlands are yes <laughs> so i don't see how we went beyond joanna could you pull our up position our we should have just denied it could you could you pull up the application for the case that we're discussing please yes i will give me a few moments please I tried to find it online, but oh, I see. The Zoom thing takes over and I don't know how to, oh, there's this. Maybe I could find it, but I couldn't share it anyway. Here's the denial. What is it exactly you want to see? The, oh, the, denial. the denial, just for two minutes there to read it or one minute. Okay, denial first. Okay, please, thank you. You're welcome. He seeks a variance to develop a vacant lot in the commercial zone with a two car garage and office. This commercial setbacks does not meet a hundred feet from the southern boundary. It's, it's not a it's not a setback from wetland, at least not according to Dale. So now the next one, please, Joanna. Okay. So he had a little map. You could show the map. Yeah. Are you ready for the map? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Okay. There it is. Yes. So he was actually 60 feet from the back lot line. One has requested 100. The ordinance requires 100 in a commercial zone for setbacks from all, all boundaries, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And then we have other setbacks from wetlands. And he's not apparently in violation of any of those because Otherwise, he would have to seek a variance for that as well. Am, mm -hmm. am I not correct, Joanna? That is correct. 
So he's looking for this back land, which is it even in town here? Yes, West. Yes, this is um, the garage place on road on uh, 152. Right, and they were they were quite a long way from their back line. So I mean, he wasn't infringing all that much. It was a bit of a hill, so it wasn't like he was right in their backyard. So. Right. So there are wetlands on his property, but it's not um, it's not the river per se. They probably feed the river or are related to the river. But in any event, I'm sure the ordinance covers setbacks to wetlands anyway. And he had to be meeting those or he would have had to ask for that. But we got off on the tangent of protecting the wetlands. That's a tangent. It's a good one to get off on. Okay, do we know Do we know what the setbacks are for the wetlands? You, you'd have to look at the ordinance. I don't have it memorized. But I'm 50, 50 to 75 feet. 50 feet from the and 75 for Barry. Not very poorly. So he was 50 feet. Right. So he met all the setbacks. Correct. Except for his boundary setback. Right. It's 50 feet. And the, and the, Ordinance says 75 feet. No, I don't think they said that. It depends on the no. time. Well, where did the 75 100. figure come from? 100 feet. 75 feet is for very poorly drained wetland areas. And there isn't any of that denoted here. 50 feet is for? Poorly drained. Right, so that's a, a more poorly drained than this one would require 75. This type of wetland, 50 feet. Yeah. So he, met he all wasn't asking setbacks. for anything in, about this. His relief had it met those setbacks. setbacks, he would he he would have had to get a variance for that as well. So now who decides if this business is appropriate for this location? The planning is that the board. planning board? Planning board. Yes. So yeah, this should have gone before them first. No. No, he has to get it from us first. It's a waste of his time to go there. If we, we're going to deny it. He's wasting a lot of time and money. Planning board's going to deny it. Same thing. You don't know what the planning board's going to do, and neither do I. That's, that's, that's my concern. That's <laughs> to speak I mean, like that. They've just been told to go along with these things. I mean, we're in trouble. They've just been told by whom? I don't know, the town attorney. This is the type of, of way that our discussion goes that is not productive and is not Why? because you're you're painting everyone on that board as you do our board with a broad brush of suspicion um, and so forth. Well, I'm just saying what I've seen around town is everything's getting approved no matter what. We, can't, we, may take, we can't make a decision on assumptions. All we can do is look at the data. Correct. And see if it fits within the criteria. We can raise concerns, and I don't understand why those concerns can't be stated. Mm -hmm. That um, although we did the variance, there were concerns about the wetlands, and asked the planning board to review the wetland issue. We don't. I think that I think that it would be almost impertinent of us to ask the planning board to review the wetland. They're going to do that. That's part of their job. And we, wow. just like our job is reviewing the criteria. So we're not in charge of how they conduct their business. I can say that I went to the joint meeting of our board and their board. Um, you did too, Raylene, the other. Yes, I, I know, but it, it seems to me, and, and this is totally outside this discussion at all, except that that seems to me a community works together to make the best decisions. And, you know, why are we worried about turf? We're worried about the best decision. And that's, I would be amazed that a planning board who we said, um, we have concerns 
about the wetlands, but it, we have no purview to be able to make a decision regarding that. That seems to me a perfectly legitimate statement when you're looking at the best interests of the community. And um, we can't change that, That's, but I think that's something that we could work towards as a community a community administrative board or whatever we call ourselves, not administrative, it's... Board of Adjustment. Thank you. Yeah, but I mean, generic, what are we all? Commissions and responsibilities. That we, we work for the best interests of the community. We don't work for our turf, we work for the best interests of the community. Yes. Right, but it's like we don't let the painters do the carpentry either. It's so uh, no, but we might say to the painters, would you look at it? We might say to the carpentries, would you look at it? Now I'm confused. <laughs> painters, carpenters. No, I'm just, I, I'm, you know, I haven't been on these boards long enough, but it seems to me as if we work in collaboration with each other, not in competition with each other. Well, I know they were as tough for a few years ago on the various requests. And like I say, the last year, year and a half, it's just been open season. Okay, that kind of statement is- totally That's my observation. Huge. I've been on this board for four we're years now. We're talking about observations. We're talking about data and we're talking about So where, where do we go from here? Well, uh, some of us have been on the board long enough. I can think Terry, Teresa, and I have been on the board long enough um, to be to see our work chastised, to see our work cost the town money because we stepped outside our boundaries. Ah, so that's the motivation. We don't want to cost it's the town not. money. Peter, you, are, you do not have the floor, okay? Well, you're saying things, you know, about the three of you and you're leaving me out. So yeah, you can just talk to yourself. You weren't on the board for that. You recused yourself. Oh, recused himself again. We left. Well, that was good. Good, good thing, Bonnie. You did good. Um, I just, I just, I get tired of the same diatribe. It's, it's not productive. It's not um, positive. It's not. You could write down what Peter's going to say at every meeting, I think, easily. Okay. Can I ask, what do we need to do to address this issue at this point in time? I think it's to create awareness and to learn the boundaries of our board and how we're supposed to work with these kinds of things. We didn't do anything illegal, but we created a situation for the town that's impossible for them to monitor and enforce. And it was not one of the questions before the board. It was not anything that was in our purview. If this business meets the ordinance, that's what we have to deal with is the ordinance. If it meets the letter and the spirit of the ordinance and the person proves through the legal requirements that they qualify for whatever they're asking us, whether their garage is 24 feet wide or 60 feet wide, not our business. That is taken up by the building inspector and the planning board in most of these cases. And we have been sued for doing this sort of thing. Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm intrigued by the question of how, given what you have said, not you have said, but what the ordinance says, that we are to act in the public interest and in preserving certain elements of New Hampshire, preserving the rural nature, blah, 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 the public interest and so on and so forth. And yet whenever there is a question, we seem to be Restricted. I understand Dale's point. How do we monitor this? The 2,500 gallons. It sounds like he's saying, "How do I monitor that they only have 2,500 gallons in their truck?" 
That seems to me to be the question that he's asking. There's no way I can enforce the 2,500 gallon oil issue. And however, I understand yeah, that. I, I wanna make two points if you're kind of at a pause. He, could, he can enforce the variance that we granted him that he asked us for, if we grant it. He can enforce 59.2 feet on one side and the 57.5 on the other. Bonnie, I've lost you, I can't hear you. Am I, am I you're speaking? I can still hear you, Bonnie. You're good. I can hear you, Bonnie. Can you hear me, Raylene? Have I you think we lost Raylene. Well, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm back, but I, I lost Bonnie. I couldn't okay. hear. I can could see her now? talking, but I couldn't hear her. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so I will repeat what I said. Dale can enforce the setback that we grant, which which yes. which we did the 57 point something feet and the 59.2 on the other side. He can enforce that. Also, I believe that we as a board must give credence to the tone, tenor, and language of the zoning ordinance. If the zoning ordinance allows something, it's not really our place to disallow it because Peter doesn't think it's in the public interest or somebody else doesn't. The zoning board suppose, I mean, the zoning board writes the zoning ordinance, which the town people vote on. This is a document that hopefully supposedly has underlying it the public interest. So if the public interest has been dealt with in that document and 50 feet from a wetland is, is what's required and this guy requires it, that's why I say that's not in our purview. We have to uphold the ordinance, not make an ordinance ourselves. We're not the planning board. We don't write the ordinance and we don't um, go against what the people voted in. I mean, that's how I look at it. I mean, does any, can anybody else expand on that? I'm just trying to explain well, my understanding. I think we have to make stipulations that are enforceable by the building inspector. I mean, the guy was talking about he would, he would make a bigger berm on his building contain the oil. I mean, that's something we could have done and that's something easily enforceable by Dale. Say, oh yeah, okay, that's right. But I mean, not to go over there every night and look at the guy's oil truck. So. Right. And I, as I recall, that um, motion was restated two or three times at least with things changed. And I right, know that that's what I said. Dale is saying that the problem is the monitoring of the 2,500 gallons. That struck me as that was his key concern, that it's going to be very hard to enforce that restriction. Very hard, but that wasn't his only concern. His other concern was that that issue would have been dealt with by the planning board in their site. And the site plan, yes. And they could, maybe he's, they could have added things that made it safe and they, and they still can. And that we have made a condition on that variance that's not enforceable. We don't have, First of all, we probably don't have the right to go in a person's garage and look in their oil truck to see if they have 3,000 gallons instead of 2,500 in there. You know, there is no mechanism for enforcement. No, so we did, and we did discuss that at the time. Bonnie, I think the hardest part in all of this is that not so much with special exceptions because we don't go through the same criteria that we do with variances, but people get hung up on, on what is the public interest in that. And they, and it's, it's actually more of a forgetting that the special exception or the variance or whatever is related to whatever is exactly written in our, our notice. So, um, you mentioned that the size of the building and stuff like that doesn't matter and it doesn't but what happens is that people people either people coming in or people being peter or, or you know any one of us is looking at what's going on with the why do they need this why do they need such a big garage why do they need such a big whatever and that isn't we, we've got to get away from looking at that and going okay the special the public interest is if this garage is here, 
does it does it bother anybody regardless of what size it is but is it a problem and i and i think we need to be really i'm keyed in on that mm. but that i think that was the prompt was the concern that there was an issue with the wetlands with the potential for the wetlands and the question is can we make decisions regarding potential or only when it happens and then say oh gee that's too bad i think that was the but but i think if you the problem is the problem with that raylene is that you were looking at wetlands and his business when the reason we were there was can he put his garage within this distance of his backyard you need we really shouldn't even be able to go well, what are you going to be putting in there well, what's that all about well, what's that for because that has nothing to do with what we are looking at our job was to look at can this building be put in this place period all right we he wasn't coming for a use special exception he was coming for right. and, and that's where the planning board comes in is around the that is correct. Yeah. And that's why we've, we've, we've got the other boards, regardless of what anybody else on the board thinks of them, it doesn't really matter. We each have our own, our own business. And it goes back to minding your P's and Q's. In my opinion, it's like, we're supposed to mind this, they, re they mind the rest of it. And, you know, speaking to the case that we got sued on, if we had looked at, can he build here, period, it would have been end of story, move on with your life. You, if you start looking at all of the weeds, then you get yourself in trouble. Okay, let me, let me just ask a hypothetical question and then just yeah. to help me to understand this. If somebody wanted to build a garage for nuclear bombs, I, this is a, a ridiculous, but just for nuclear bombs, we would say, well, we can't worry whether they're going to put nuclear bombs in it. All we can say is, does this meet the variance of putting a building in this place? And I've made it ridiculous, but at the same time, I really need to understand that we have no purview over what's in that building. Only can the building be in that place. Is that correct? And that is correct, because the rest of it, the rest the rest of what you're suggesting is somebody else's business to look at because somebody else like Dale would go, well, wait, you know, you want to store bombs there. That's not something we can allow in town. Or if it was a big one for storage and they were going to be a whole lot of them and they needed a site review, then the planning board would be saying, um, that's not in our list of approved um, businesses for our town. Right. Regardless of what we say, you know, we can say you can build the, the garage or the barn to, for storage. You wanted a storage barn? Yes, you can have the storage barn because it doesn't really affect your neighbors. It's not going to be too high, blah, 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 whatever else. And then the rest of it goes on to the other to the other board. Yeah, the other board, and it, and it comes out of the ordinance. You know, does the ordinance allow? If the ordinance allows someone to have a building with nuclear bombs in it, then they have a right to do it. Right. But our only concern is whether the building can be put in that plot, not whether the building itself is safe or has anything to do with it. It's just the building itself. Well, the safety of it is, is Dale's job. That's, that's what he looks at. No, well, you've clarified for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I think um, if anyone has anything further on this issue, I think do we have any other, any other yes. for the board, Joanna? Yes, minutes. Minutes. Yeah, for July 21st and September 15th, all edits have been made. Madam, Madam Chair, if there's no further discussion on it, I move that we approve the minutes as edited. Is there a second? I'll second it. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes as edited, all those in favor, please say aye. I'll start aye. 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 Four, nothing. 
Do we have other minutes before us, Joanna? No. Nope. Nope, that, that's it. Do we have any other business or to discuss? No. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion we adjourn. I second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn this meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Raylene say aye. I did. Sorry. Aye. Awesome. Okay. Four, four eyes. So I guess that's it. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Take care. Take care.